I was about seven years old when I first heard about New Kids on the Block. I had a friend who lived in Boston, and she was the daughter of, a, of uh, my mom's friend. And she would write me letters about this group that had just come out, and I said, oh, you know, I haven't heard about them. And I really didn't get deep into it until about 1988. I was uh, nine years old. And my friends at school, we just heard the song on the radio and we just played it over and over again. And finally their faces started popping up all over the place on magazines and in school. So we just started buying magazines, picking up records. And this New Kids on the Block was the, was the fad. So everyone didn't think it was going to last. And it's been around for, they were around until 1994. And for me, that's already 2001. I'm 22 years old and <laughs> I'm still a New Kids on the Block freak. I love all the new kids on the block, but definitely Jordan's my favorite. And I think it's mostly because he's so cute. He's got the most amazing face, an incredible smile, and aside from all that, he's very talented and smart and yada yada yada. But look at him. I mean, even as a doll, he's extremely cute. I, I sleep with this doll pretty much every night next to me. The very first time I met Jordan, I went to a radio station where he was doing an interview. And there was about 30 girls there, and everyone was so excited, and a, a van with tinted windows pulled into the driveway, and I couldn't move. I had a dozen red roses in my hand, and I had given my camera to my best friend, and when she ran over to the van, she got a few shots of him coming out, and security had blocked off the door where he was going to come to. So I was the only one standing next to the door, and I just see him coming at me, and very faintly in the back, I can hear my friend saying, you know, this is your chance. You've been waiting so many years for this. Give him the flowers. Tell him how much you love him. And I can only remember it in slow motion. And he's walking towards me just really slowly. Just this whole thing's going on. <laughs> and he's coming right next to me. He looks up. He smiles. He says, hi. And I'm standing there with these red roses in my hand. When he says hi, the only thing that comes out of my mouth is like a big silent, er, uh, and... He giggled, and as he passed by, his jacket touched my shoulder. I, my eyes got watery. <laughs> I forgot to give him the flowers. He walked through the door, and as soon as that door shut, I burst into tears, and I had to call my mom and tell her that I had just touched Jordan Knight. I wrote a 100-word essay explaining why I was his number one fanatic, and that I had done a bungee jump holding, and I love Jordan Knight signed. Um, I got picked by a radio station and I got to go backstage to meet him. Um, before I got back there, I was in tears, like I couldn't hold my composure. Um, I thought I had saw him and I almost fainted. When I finally got back there, he came over and he held my hand and he was like, look, I'm just a regular person and he was touching my face and I said, you can't do that because I'm going to pass out. <laughs> and um, it, was, it was so nerve wracking that I swore my heart was about to pop out of my chest. Um, all I remember was him touching my hand and signing some stuff for me, giving it to me. I asked him a few questions, and by the end of that, I, it, I drew a blank. I couldn't even remember. I was, I was so exhausted and so excited after practically 13 years of wanting to meet him, finally getting the chance to. It was insane. Lust! Some people just like his music, but everyone that's just in love with Jordan Knight. 100 words or less, we got a bunch of letters, and, uh, well, they, I have been handed this by the judges. I have the winner in my hand right now. Good morning, Penny Craig Live. Hi, I'm looking for Patty. This is her? Hi, Patty, this is Aaron. Hi. Oh, my God. From Z95.7. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, I'm filling in for Fernando today. Hi, Aaron, how so are that means you? I have to do all his stuff. How's it going? It's going okay. Unfortunately, one of the things I have to do is call you. Oh, my gosh. Talk to you about Jordan Knight. Oh, my gosh. You're a pretty big fan? I'm the biggest Jordan Knight fan. You have no idea. How long have you been the biggest Jordan Knight Since fan? Since, like, 1986. Oh, my goodness. I, it's the first time I heard his voice. So, oh, you're just in love with his singing. And no, his singing, his looks, the lips, everything. I love him to death. Well, you are going to meet him this weekend. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you... Are you crying? I'm crying. Good, I wanted you to cry. Oh my god, I'm dying. That's good radio. I want you to fall. I was listening right now to the radio and I was like, please let him call me, please let him call me. Oh Patty, what are you going to ask Jordan? What's the first thing out of your mouth? Will you marry me? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So what station's putting you face to face with Jordan Knight? Z95.7. This is the envelope that I used 
when I won the Fanatic contest. What I did was just put on pictures of him, of Jordan when he was younger and nowadays. And I hand delivered it to the radio station. And I guess they really got a kick out of it because obviously I was the winner. And aside from that, I have my winning essay. And it shows Jordan through all of his career. And it just tells you how big of a fan that I am of his. And down here is a picture of, of Jordan one of the times I met him and a picture of me holding those red roses that I never got to give to him because I um, freaked out, never had the opportunity. Since this whole thing started, my goal was to meet all five of the new kids. And so far I've met only, I've only met two, but Jordan being my favorite, um, anytime he comes anywhere near my city, um, I follow. This is when he was at a radio station the very first time I met him. So all these pictures were taken by me. Um, I've been at his hotels. I've bribed his managers. I've bribed security guards. Anything to get me close to him. And so far I've done a pretty good job. He's done live concerts in our, sh in the, in our city for free in the middle of nowhere. And I've been there six o'clock in the morning you know, lined up just to get a glimpse of them. Um, to meet all five of the guys, I think I'd probably have a heart attack. <laughs> I really think I would pass out. That then you could you can shoot me and I'd die a happy woman. The first thing I ever collected was a Jordan Knight t-shirt. Um, 1989, I think. My dad got it for me at a concert, my very first concert. And I sat there at the concert with 103 fever, wearing a, a hat and scarf because I had the flu. And my dad had went out to buy me a Jordanite t-shirt. I don't remember anything but seeing five guys about this big on the stage because we were in probably in the very last row. And um, from then on, I started getting posters and shirts and pins, magazines, anything I can get my hand on with one of them or all of them on the cover everything I started collecting. I've got from bed sheets to bags, books, um, lunch boxes, jackets, dolls, you name it, pretty much I've got it. This, these are the two Jordan Knight shirts that I have right now. This one is actually the very first piece of memorabilia that I started collecting. This is the very first shirt that my dad gave me when we went to a concert and that was in 1988. And this shirt, Jordan Knight himself gave it to me when I met him once at a concert. Um, he handed it to me, and this is actually the first time the shirt's been out. Um, I don't keep it out. I don't ever wear it. Um, it's never been used. After this, it goes in a bag. It goes like in a Ziploc bag because I'm like that, and I put it in there just in case of a flood. So <laughs> um, it can't be it can't be damaged at all. The dolls um, are a big part of the collection. There's five, there's four different sets of dolls. Um, there's the concert dolls the hanging loose dolls and all the guys are in their regular street clothes Then there's plush dolls and the plush dolls are pillow dolls um, that you use that I still have to add to my collection three of them and aside from the plush dolls we've got the action figures which I have all of them but the dolls that that you saw in the boxes they've never been opened they've never been played with um, I've always wanted to play with them, but I'm waiting till I get second sets of each of them so I can play with them, or at least I could take them out of the box and see what the back of their heads look like, because I've never opened them. I've never had the chance to play with them, so I think um, when it comes to time and I get a second set, I definitely, I'll definitely play with them, but for now, those will stay on the boxes. You have to retain their value. This whole row right here of CDs are all New Kids on the Block. I think this one is probably my favorite because it's unwrapped. Um, it's never been opened, and it's from Japan. It's got all the ja all the Japanese songs, and on the inside are Japanese lyrics. And I think one of the songs are actually written and sang in Japanese. But that's too bad because I'm never gonna open it. Um, it's gonna have to stay this way um, for as long as I shall live. So <laughs> okay, it may sound weird, but I have Jordan Knight. Jordan Knight came out with a, with a solo album. And of that solo album, I have tons of copies. And everybody asks me why. And the reason is 
you have to be logical. You have to have one sealed CD, because you never know what could happen to yours. A CD that you listen to in your car, you have to have a wrapped uh, tape and an unwrapped tape that you have in your car. I also have my signed CDs and some that, I, some that I just got for the picture so I could cut it up in case I use it. So I have about six of Jordanite's solo album and you use them for many different reasons. So that adds up to my collection. Okay, this chest is one of about 200 that were ever made. Um, they were only made temporarily due to the fact that um, they were falling apart. So <laughs> only about 200 of them. And I've got this one and I have one right now on special order that's coming in um, from Germany. So I should have it within about two weeks. Um, this one's a little bit worn out, but hopefully the, the second one that I get will, will be fine. I've spent so much money on this um, fascination with the new kids on the block that it's ridiculous. I've paid up to seventy to one hundred dollars for CDs. My whole collection is probably I've spent about maybe four thousand dollars on it. Um, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame had asked me if they could borrow my collection because it's one of the collections in the world that are almost full. It's almost perfect. They had wanted to display it for an 80s take back thing um, for the summer. And they found somebody who was a little bit closer to it, so they didn't use my collection. But it is one of the ones that's most complete. And they were going to insure my collection for about $80,000. So it's really worth it. Most of my collection's in really good, um, in really good shape, mostly because one, I don't play with it, and second of all, because I don't have it out on display. Um, I usually have everything put away and everything is wrapped first and then they're put in plastic bags. Um, I don't want any dust on them. I don't like, um, I have I have them in the plastic bags mainly in case of flooding or things, um, things go in bubble wrap so that none of the edges get creased or none of the boxes get crushed. Um, I have to preserve it really well if I, if I ever want to sell it, which I doubt I ever will. Um, but like I said before, it was insured for $80,000, and I don't think I'd ever take $80,000 over my over my stuff. I mean, it's stuff that I've collected for years and years, and I would never, ever try and sell it or get rid of any portion of it. Well, what can I say about her? I can say that I thought it was going to go, it was going to be a couple of months, and then it was she was going to forget about everything. But it hasn't. It's been more than five years, eight years, more than that since it was she was eight. And um, I have a couple of stories to tell you about that one. Like when she asked me permission to go to um, Stonestowns to get some tickets. And she left. And um, I get a phone call about an hour after telling me that... Um, asking for her. Someone was asking for her and I asked who it was and he said it was a uh, radio station person and that he was looking for her because when he had seen her earlier in the morning she was going, he was going to try to get some tickets for her and I said where did you see her? He goes in Conquer and I said oh you did? And I said she asked permission to go to Stonestown and he goes uh oh did I get her in trouble? And I said yes you did so what I did, I waited for her. I went and got some um, paper. I folded it. I put it in an envelope. And when she came in, I told her that I had gotten the tickets for her. And she was so excited, screaming and everything. And then right in front of her, I tore it apart. And I said, you know why? Because you lie. You could have gone to it. And she really thought the tickets were in there. And that was my punishment for her, for lying. Because she had gone to conquer, and I thought she was here in San Francisco. And on top of that, she took my uh, ATM card to purchase them. So I really enjoyed the fact that she was suffering while I tore the paper, empty paper in the envelope. 
and I tore some of her things on the wall. She could have slapped me. She could have done anything. You know what? Don't feed me for two weeks, but let me go to this damn show. <laughs> That's just not right. You can't do that to somebody who's so in love with a group. Oh, an ATM card. Big deal. Um, so I went across the bay without permission. Big deal. This was my life. It still is. And it's a grudge that I'm always going to have with her that she, she made me miss the last show. At the time, I didn't know it was going to be the last show. But I mean, that's something that I'm never going to be able to get back. There's never going to be a reunion tour. There's nothing I'm going to ever see like that again. I've never lost a part of my collection, but the funniest thing was that one of them, one of my things were damaged and it was a, a poster and it wasn't damaged, let's say by my dog eating it or it fell in a puddle of water. No, my brother decided to draw a mustache on one of their faces. For me, I was about 11 years old. That was it. I, after that, I had no brother. And when I got home and I found that poster with the mustache, I think we ran around the house about 12 times before I tackled him to the ground. Um, he ended up with a black eye and a pencil in his head. He, he ended up with the tip of the pencil in his head. And that's what he gets for putting a mustache on one of my boys. <laughs> the newer boy bands or the newer male singing groups, as they call them, are not even close to what the New Kids on the Block are. New Kids on the Block brought on this whole boy band pop thing, you know, years ago. And all it is now is they're finding guys who fit the exact images of New Kids on the Block singing um, same, pretty much the same songs, same things as the New Kids on the Block. I, I think that they're just copycats. That's all it is. It's a, it's a copycat that they know that this New Kids on the Block routine worked for them. So of course they're making millions of dollars now. The Monkees and the Beatles have nothing on the New Kids on the Block. There's one video that shows them on their instruments. They do all play instruments. A lot of times people think that I'm the only fan left of the New Kids on the Block, but in reality, there's so many of us. There's 50, maybe about 50, 60 New Kids on the Block mailing list for emails. Every year there's New Kids on the Block convention in Boston. Um, there's tons of groups nearby. Every city pretty much has a New Kids on the Block group and they get together on weekends to hang out and talk about things. Girls meet on the internet and there's slumber parties. There's New Kids on the Block Fan Day. Every May 17th, for me, it's a party. May 17th is Jordan Knight's birthday. I celebrate everybody else's birthday, but Jordan Knight's the biggest. So every May 17th, you'll see me dressed up. I have a cake, and there's balloons, and there's a party. Even if it's just me and my dog. But there's a party on May 17th. There are groups in pretty much every city. And the one here in our city, we've, get, we've got about 20 girls and about 5 guys. And we all get together maybe once every two months and we have video night or we do picture night or we all just go hang out. And the cool thing is that a group like New Kids on the Block brought us all together. There's fan conventions and there's maybe four or five hundred of us that show up and we pay big bucks just to go and have a New Kids on the Block weekend. When he came in concert, when Jordan Knight came in concert, I mean, I had already been parts of these groups, so I had people from all over California coming over to, to the city to see him. And it's good to see out in the crowd all these young girls for the new age uh, boy band. And if you look out in the crowd, I saw all these familiar faces that were around from when I was going to concerts when I was about 10. And all these people that I see now, you know, at radio stations chasing the guys or... Um, at restaurants and we're all hanging out in our cars and things like that. It's, it's good to see other people that are fans just like me.